All righty. Okay, we are live and we are going to tackle a very, very good question today. This was from Elise and it is, how do I narrow down or what's the best way to narrow down my products or services to focus on how to get my ideal client to knock on my front door, come in and look at my solutions. So just like with everything, when we're looking at any portion of our Kajabi business, we always want to start with our North Pole to New York City analysis. And that means your North Pole, which is your read magnet, that takes people to your opt-in, which is when they become a subscriber. Then you have your intro offer. Other people could call this a tripwire offering. I also sometimes call it a lily pad because it helps people leap from being a subscriber to your core offer, which is your New York city. So this intro offer can, there's two different situations that this typically ends up in. The first scenario is when the intro offer is a lower price point or a lower commitment than the New York city, which is a higher price point but it does not have to be that way. Sometimes in situation two, you can have a higher intro with a lower New York City. So if you had a standalone course that was a higher price point and then an ongoing subscription, that could be your New York City. So they are not locked into place. What is locked into place is you knowing what you want to offer. So what I'm gonna do, that is, that's our baseline. That's where you have to then start your work. Now, what you want to do, and I would recommend getting a sheet of paper, pen and pencil, notebook. If you have a digital whiteboard like I do, you can use that. But when you're trying to narrow down your products, first, you've got to brainstorm because all creatives, all preneur minded people, um, ideas are never what we have in short supply ever. I have yet to meet an entrepreneur or a creative who says, oh my gosh, my ideas are totally dried up. I have no idea what to do. It is the opposite. It is, oh my goodness, I could do this and this and this and this. Oh, and I could have versions one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on just number A. Like you've got a ton of them. I know this because I do too. So what you do is you make some lines. Okay. And these lines are going to make sense. Just a second. We're going to put a few of them down. Because when you are talking about your products and services, when you have North Pole to New York City, and again, picture in your mind, I'm trying to get someone from cold traffic, they don't know who I am, so that's why it's North Pole, we use that metaphor, to New York City as fast as humanly possible. We don't want them to wander around taking this long meandering path to finally buy from us. We want them to go, wow, I loved that podcast wow, here's my name and email address. Oh my goodness, look what you can sell me and solve my problems. Oh my gosh, I'm a raving fan for the next 10 years. That's what we're trying to do. So with your lines on your piece of paper, and I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a little brain, we're gonna do a brainstorm session over here. So let me just get rid of this for just a minute. Love my digital whiteboard. I can erase like a professional. There we go. So let's say that, oh, hold on. Get product information in our group. Nope. Did not mean to turn on somebody else's you Facebook live. Go away. Nope, shower. go away. Okay. I dropped my phone. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna brainstorm. So you're gonna say, okay, I have course A that I wanna run. And I have maybe course B or course C. And then, yes, I would love to have a membership. And maybe I'd like to do an event. Maybe I'd like to write a book. Um, what else? You could say, it doesn't have to be things you want to sell. Maybe it could be, I want to do a podcast. I want to have YouTube videos. So you're writing down all your ideas, okay? You're saying, yes, these exist in my brain, and here's all the things that I can do. This next part it doesn't matter what order you do it in because our brains are all wired slightly differently. All that matters is we go, okay, what do I want to make my money from? 
Like when I'm looking at this, what do I want to make my money on? Okay. So I'm going to add blog in here too. Okay. I have some friends that make their money from blogging. For them, this would get a dollar sign because they want to make money from their blog. I do not. I do not make money from a blog. So for me, the blog is a North Pole. Okay. So looking at your list, what do you want to make your money on? Okay. Put a dollar sign next to that because that means it's either going to be an intro offer or it's going to be a New York City. When you are trying to say, how do I narrow down my products and services? You have to keep in mind you're driving this bus or this car or this plane, whatever mode of transportation you want to think of it, you are driving the business. So let's say we go, yep, I want to make money from my membership and a couple courses that I have. So I say, okay, I'm going to put this membership on a line. Okay. So I put it right here on this line. It says membership. Then you can only have one thing on a line at this point. Okay. Every North Pole to New York City is its own runway. Imagine an airport. Two planes cannot land on the same runway or they will crash. So if you start wanting to sell all these things and they're not on their own runway, they will crash. Okay. You're going to defeat exactly what you're trying to do. So let's put course on, and we'll put course A on this line and we'll put course B over here. Okay. So again, we're giving it separate lines and we're saying, okay, these are all the things that I could sell. And I'm going to put a book on here. Okay. This book is a natural extension. I've written one. My husband's written two. Um, books are a natural extension. They often come into play. So we'll include that one. So when you look at this and you go, okay, I could do all of these things. We have to prioritize. You have to choose one thing. All right. Especially as you're starting out my, uh, when the facts and circumstances are, you have a mature business, you can have multiple things because you've already crossed the milestones. But as you're starting out, what I use as a baseline metric, you have to know your metrics is I am making $2,000 every month for three months in a row because you have to know that what you're doing is converting to sales. If you don't give it enough time, contrary to what you may have heard on a webinar or a course, this stuff does take time to build it. No one came in with audiences of 100,000 people. Nobody made six figures literally in their 48 hours of business. They had years behind them. The good thing is most of us have already been in business. Like this is an extension of something we have been doing a lot of us for decades. We're just doing it in a different way. So I like to use this as a metric. Obviously you can change it facts and circumstances. You can totally adjust this as needed, but please don't go lower than 2000 a month for three months before you start adding different things. So when you look at your Hey, these are the things I could offer. Which thing most excites you, most doable to get to this 2000 a month? You want to look at that and go, okay, what's the most doable? What is the easiest thing for me to do? And the one that I get a little excited about. I mean, I can picture talking about this and making it and putting it together and I could structure my metrics pricing wise such that I can do this. All right. Any, you guys have any questions so far? Nope. Nope. Jenny says, nope. Okay. So if I look at this and I go, you know what? I I think I could do this course A. This course, I look at it and go, you know what? I'm going to charge $100 and I can sell it to 20 people in a month. 20 people, $100, that's my 2000 a month. 
okay, that's doable. I, I can put that together. Meaning I can make this product, a hundred dollar product. You're not looking at more than maybe three to five videos, a couple of PDFs. We're talking a small book, not a massive encyclopedia set. We're talking a small, what could I digest? That's a, a hundred feels like a hundred dollars. All right. That is your hundred dollar thing. So realistically, even someone that's new on Kajabi and new to setting this up, realistically, in a couple of weeks at the most, really, I think most people, even total newbies, could have that up in a week. It won't be a perfect version. As we like to say, it will be the B minus. We like B minus because B minus gets out the door. You can sell a B minus version. So if I go, yep, I want to do course A, $100, 20 people each month. And looking at that, obviously that's not where I want to end my, you know, I, that's where I want to start. Okay. That's a hundred dollars. It's not a lot of people. It's a very doable, um, metric. So I look at it and I go, okay, I want to do this course. We're going to, oh, there, here's my little lasso here. There we go. I'm going to move that to this line. Okay, and we're gonna take off this just so I can move it in a little bit better. And I will show you how this does not break the rule of having one thing on a line. Okay, so course A, we're gonna move it into here. And we said this was $100. We go, okay, I wanna make that course, but really I wanna have an ongoing membership community. I want to have a way for these people that took my course to then be part of an ongoing membership. I would like to build a community. I would like to have this place where like-minded people are coming together in whatever area it is that you serve. That Then this intro product leads as very naturally into a membership. Let's say the membership is $50 a month. You can build the course, okay? You build the course, you focus on the course, meeting the metrics right here, but you know, as you're North Pole to New York City, that your course will lead into the membership. So maybe they bought the course and it takes you six months to get the, the course converting, to build up the people that are going to form the community that you wanna offer when you reach that point, then your membership, you're not marketing this to these people, this cold traffic. You are marketing this to people that are already vetted as buyers. And you know that because they bought your course. So that's how I start looking at, I take all my puzzle pieces and then I start walking through exactly what we did. What is that I want to sell? Who is, what do I have that I can get out there relatively quickly? Because not, there's no need to spend a year building something massive. You need to vet your audience. You need to say, do I have a viable product? And I know there are hundreds of books written on this and you could read all day till the cows come home. You just got to put an offer up there and that's where you pick. You go, okay, it's course A. And I'm putting course yeah. A out there. And then I move on from here. You can do the alternative. Maybe you say, you know what? I want course A here. And then I want it to lead into a bigger course B. And course B is more expensive than A was, whatever that is. Or I can say, I want, just moving puzzle pieces around here. I want to have the membership as an beginning offer. And I want that to lead into course B. Or I can do, I want to do a book here. Let's say the book is $20. And then I want to have that lead into course A. And while we don't include this in our acronym, we do have a London. So beyond New York City, you can have more things 
It just means we have to keep it on the same line. Then it goes to my membership. But that's how you narrow down what is it I need, can sell, need to sell, want to sell, and making sure it ends up on its own line. Questions, ideas, thoughts. I have a couple of, this is, am I, can you hear me? I sure can. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's, uh, I guess where I'm coming from is I, I have two different segments of the population that I can um, take this to. And I'm just trying to think what's the best way to do it um, and reach my ideal client. Um, so one is for parents and then the other one would be for for professionals, dental professionals. Okay. Well, professionals. It wouldn't have to be limited to dental. It'd be probably more holistic practitioners to start out with, uh, because their mindset would be more open to hearing this information. Okay. So we're gonna put people on a different line. Okay. So we have parents. They obviously think one way. We're gonna speak to them differently than when we would speak to the holistic professionals. Out of those two groups, you've, you've interacted with both of these groups before, right? Mm -hmm. Which are the easiest to get moving? I'd say the holistic practitioners. Okay. So they're going to get a star. They, they, they like to, they move better than the parents do. So you go, okay, I've got holistic professionals. Well, they, and many of them are parents too. So it's. Oh, even better. Yeah, so it's sort of a little of both or grandparents. Mm -hmm. So we're going to write in here also parents and grandparents. And this is the this is the cool thing when you know who you're talking to. So when I opened my very very first um, bit business that was mine was a virtual law firm. It's Law. It's 2011. And it was focused on estate planning, but it was focused on middle-class parents with two kids who didn't have guardians for their kids. Well, those people typically 25 to 45 also had parents that needed exactly what I had, but I never talked about their parents. I only talked to them. I, all my marketing was towards them. Everything was focused on the quality they had that I was focused on, which would be you as professic or the professional <laughs> holistics. But in talking to my person, they were all children. They all had parents. All those parents ended up being referred to me because their kids had referred them. So in when you're trying to decide, okay, I've got to narrow down my audience. I've got to get them to my lead magnet always focus on the quality that you want to be to be bringing in the other stuff by not talking about it doesn't mean that it's not going to come in it's going to come in as a natural byproduct but you're not going to confuse the people that you want to talk to so if you say between talking to someone as a i'll say primary characteristic primary as a parent or primary as a holistic professional if you say yep the professionals are easier to get moving then everything is aimed at their language, at their pain points of their primary characteristic being the professional. Knowing that, yes, their grandparents and their parents and their aunts and uncles and their you know, guardians and family friends, it will all trickle down, but you won't be diluting the messaging by trying to talk to too many pieces and as a result, getting nowhere. Does that make sense? Does that help? Okay, so for the um, holistic professionals, what do you want, like, what do you want thinking to sell them? I'm wanting to sell them courses. Okay. And I'm guessing you have a few courses that you're having a hard time deciding between. Uh, no, I've narrowed that down. Oh, good. I'm just getting ready to record those probably today. Awesome. Okay. So we can just put course. We're going to put course, not courses. We're going to put course 
under your intro column. Right. So when you say, okay, what, what's the course that you want to uh, market? It would be on airway uh, for children. Okay. And do you have a lead magnet for that? Um, I would say at this time, no. Okay. What are, what are you thinking you might want to do as a lead magnet? I have a lead magnet now that I think of it. Um, hmm. uh, in that course, I allude to a sleep questionnaire designed for children. That's free on my website. Okay. Is it like a quiz or? It's an automated questionnaire that um, ranks their child into okay category, caution, or high risk. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So the goal would be to have them take that questionnaire so they can determine where the child is. And also actually by taking the questionnaire, it kind of gets them to pause and think about like, well, I don't, I really don't know if my kid's grinding their teeth at night. I, they're mm -hmm. down the hall, I don't hear them. Well, okay, you have to pause that questionnaire, maybe spend a night or two creeping down the hall and hearing, you know, listening if that's going on or how are they when they wake up in the morning? So it's a teaching tool as well for them to say, wow, I didn't even realize my kid was doing that stuff. I love that as leading into the course. Like that makes total sense. So does it feel like we're starting to get to your answering your question? Yes. Okay. So all of the copy, everything that if I first hear about you or meet you or see you, all your direct, all your call to actions, all the choices available to me are going to be aimed at this sleep questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Speaking to me as a professional. Then once I, when I opt in to this, that is when then you build out, like we've talked about before, the email and automation infrastructure comes in to then support moving the buyers to the course over here. But you don't have to think about that till you get to the first, though you finish this first wave, which is I'm narrowed down. I'm talking to professionals. I am talking to them all about this sleep questionnaire. So any of the read magnets that I make are talking about that questionnaire, different pieces of it. You can come up with blog posts. You can come up with podcasts. You can then start to identify where could I even guest, be a guest on a podcast, speaking to people where we share common commonality points. And then it stays right on this track which allows the sales to convert. Right, so I did a, uh, a summit, I'll be on a summit, an oral health summit. Um, I just don't know when that's gonna be aired. So that'll be one thing. And mm -hmm. then tomorrow I'm on a podcast relating to this topic. Awesome. Mm -hmm. ah. So kind of my read magnet um, is, the topic is um, what I, commonly hear in the dental practice when parents have an issue that they bring up about their child, like if they're grinding their teeth or snoring, the typical response is, oh, they'll grow out of it. Mm -hmm. The topic of my course, or, you know, we'll now I'll make that the topic of my blog is they'll grow out of it. And mm -hmm. the name of that course is the same. They'll grow out of it. And then I go into why that's not true and um, what's happening, how baby, how a child gets set up for all these airway issues. No, it makes total sense to me. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? I mean, it, it sounds like more, you have more clarity to me. 
Yeah, I do now. And then ultimately I would want them to say, wow, what else does she teach? And then mm -hmm. I have other courses that would take them into, yes. um, you know, kind of my expert is on tongue, tongue evaluation. And so mm -hmm. I have tongue university and in there, there will be two separate tracks, one for professionals, one for parents. And then ultimately they would, the professionals would want to take some courses to a, a course to learn about more about that tongue issue. And then, um, and then in the membership, I was going to set up three packages. One would be, you just, you just want a, more information. You don't really, you just want to be sort of quiet and silent and learn that in your comfort of your own home period. You're done. Hopefully not. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one would be your, your practitioner. And now you have a patient in front of you and you see some stuff on the tongue that you remembered learning in my course, and you'd like to get some help, what to do with that patient. So I have like a hybrid program where for a particular fee, they could come in and meet with me and we jointly go over the case together and help to just educate them on what what they saw and then the other part of that membership would be i don't want to have anything to do with it i don't really want to be involved with that i just want to refer my patients completely over to you mm -hmm. yep. and that's exactly how it ends up working because when you have membership and you do membership design and you say, okay, who are my people? Where do they fit? How do, where are they going to move? Are they going to move, you know, in between levels? Like, are they going to fluctuate moving in between or are they kind of, Hey, they come in on one level and they're just going to stay on those pieces. When you know, North Pole to New York city and everything gets its own runway, then it becomes very clear. Okay. Where am I moving people towards? Because the infrastructure, the email infrastructure that exists on any single person's funnel or pipeline, whatever you want to call it, is exactly, um, I was drawing it in as you were talking, and that is when they take your questionnaire, so they have come into your cycles, um, and these are your professionals. So this is this, your parents are not coming into this. This is for the professionals who may also be parents and grandparents. They get the initial welcome sequence of emails. All of these are designed entirely to get them to click to your sales page for course A that you're selling. Mm -hmm. As soon as they click, they come off of this. So they're, they're gone and they're now getting the sales stuff. The sales stuff is entirely, we're gonna run, we'll have to go down here. Um, is to get them to buy the intro offer, that course A for you. Mm -hmm. And as they buy course A, then obviously we want to move them over to New York City, which is going to have its own. Let me onboard you to the new offer. Let me talk about this. Let me move you through because they're existing customers. So you have a different way of offering them a product, but the behind, um, and I'm just going to draw them all out, nurture sales intro. So these, the whole purpose is to get them to buy. When you know, this is my person, this is what they want to buy on this North Pole to New York City runway. Then as you put these pieces into place, you will, you'll either meet your conversions or you won't. And that's when you can look at your metrics and say, okay, I'm getting, let's say a thousand people that have handed me their email address, but I've sold two of this course. Normal metrics, totally normal, are if I have 20 people that see my blog or my podcast or my video, out of those 10 or out of those 20, 10 of them will hand over their email address and then the intro product is typically five out of 20 and New York City is two to three out of those 20. So mm -hmm. 
when you're looking at those and you're going, okay, if I had a thousand here, then really this should be not two, this should be closer to 500. Like three to 500 would seem to be a, where that metric should be. When you mm -hmm. see, when you can start to see these gaps or look at the metrics because your system is exactly that, like it has structure, then you can tweak or change it and say, oh, okay, I have a lot here and a little there or vice versa. Um, that's what enables then when you get to this part, you're like, okay, I want to offer this. You have metrics showing you what to expect, how many people, you know, that bought course A will likely make it through over to these different tiers and you get to make smart decisions, like very smart decisions. Um, and anyone else that knows North Pole in New York City can talk to you with it. Like I can talk to any of you guys and be like, okay, well, what's your lead magnet? Okay, how many came in on the lead magnet? How many intro products did you sell? Oh, well, 50 came in on the lead magnet and I sold 30. Awesome, that's an even better ratio. You're like, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That means, your messaging is on point. The you know timing of emails is great. All of those pieces are totally into play. And you go, yeah, that's working really well. All right, do we want to sell another product to these people, or do you want to then shift and say, you know what, that's working so well. I now want to go develop the product for my parents. I want to start a different runway, and not a different runway with the same people, different product. I want to start a new runway with different people, similar product. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to make educated decisions and execute them in weeks and months versus years. Right. Actually, the runway for each of the professionals and the parent will pretty much be the same course. I'm just going to tweak it um, you know, that would be um, tangible for parents to digest without mm -hmm. all the techie, more techie stuff. And then for the professionals, I'll give them some more meat that was like, wow, I didn't know that, you know. So it makes it makes total sense to me. Mm -hmm. Complete sense to me. Because as I did the the interview yesterday or Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, it just spurred so many more things in me about what the interviewer asked and um because this will be going out pre predominantly to um dental professionals but he said there are a good majority of people that tune in that are just lay people so i'm really hoping that 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 summit you know the exposure on that summit is going to drive some more things so mm -hmm. uh, not knowing when that's going to come out um i want to have my foundation ready mm -hmm. right i want to start building the plane and laying the the blacktop mm -hmm. on the way and mm -hmm. understanding how to put all those sequences of emails because that's i understand emails from you know looking in my kajabi um but honestly that's still a bit confusing of how to lay all of those things out that you just um drew in that um graphic so um i'm getting there none of it gets done overnight yeah. but if you have if you know there's a structure and you know there's a system then you intelligently build it like it's like oh I need I need to make sure that all my call to action is going to my single front door which is my sleep questionnaire so that mm -hmm. I am very very clear I always have to, you know, myself, I think about, okay, the front door to my home, I give you instructions, come directly to the front door. This is where what you need is right here. Once they're in, you know, once they're, once they've, you know, passed this point, like they've opted in, once they're in here, they can, you can move this part around. Again, once it's meeting metrics, because Otherwise it's impossible to know, is it because nobody wants the course? Is it because the course is too big? Rarely have I ever seen an instance where the course is too small. Always made this mistake myself. The course is too big. 
they never finish it. It is too, like, it's too many, too much. Now I I'm onto that. I'm, mine is like right to the point. Like I'm on uh, 40 slides. I got it down to 40 slides. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. But that's a, that's how you do it. That's how every single time you go, okay, how do I narrow it down? Then once I get you in there, I, my whole focus is telling you where the front door is. Mm -hmm. Get the sleep questionnaire. This is why it works. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm leading people to. Everything that I do is based on get to the lead magnet. Okay. Okay. Just like, I'm going to just stop. I'm going to stop streaming. <laughs> yes. Welcome to my house. 